Hi, my name is Kathy Moyne and we're here at Green Thumb Nursery in Lake Forest to talk about butterfly nectar plants. Now these are plants that are going to attract the butterflies to your yard. So as we've gotten a little bit warmer, we're starting to see all these colorful butterflies flit into our yard. And these plants will help them to want to come to your yard. So when I say a nectar plant, I mean this is their food. Um, host plants are what they lay their eggs on. Now some of these can be host plants, but most of them I'm going to show you today are the nectar plants. So this is something that they're going to get their food from. So I'm going to start with actual, there are some herbs and vegetables that will attract, I guess these are more herbs, that will attract them to your yard. This one is uh, flat leaf parsley. This one is dill. And this one is fennel. Now in order for them to be nectar plants, they actually have to let these flower. So they are going to have to go, now you can harvest them for a while, and then when they kind of get done and they start to stretch out and flower, if you let them flower, they will go ahead and attract the butterflies. Now fennel, I've actually seen swallowtails, which are the yellow ones with the black stripes, the, the, they'll actually come and lay their eggs on the fennel. So um, I've been holding fennel before and had one come up and just lay an egg on it. So I know they will lay eggs on there. So um, fennel too, just to be noted, does not like to be planted with other plants. So fennel needs to be all by itself. It, it is an enemy to most plants. So put your fennel in a pot all by itself. And they all, all of these plants are going to want full sun. So this, is, this one here is also an annual. This one is called Cosmos. And this is a summer annual. Now most of these plants are going to be up and flowering during the summer months when the butterflies are around. So that's kind of cool. So that way, I mean, you know, Mother Nature's figured out when the butterflies are around, we need to have something for them to eat and lay their eggs on. Okay, another annual that we carry during the summer, this is a sunflower. Now this one is a dwarf sunflower. He doesn't get very big. He stays small. There's a lot of different varieties all the way up from a two-footer to a three-footer to the big mambajama that gets six to eight feet with the big old flower the size of my face, maybe even bigger. And that's another one that's going to attract some butterflies for you. Now this one, this next one we're going to talk about, this one is called Echinacea or cone flower. They come in several different colors. This is what we call a herbaceous perennial. So what that means is it's going to die down completely to the ground and then come back again next summer. Now sometimes here in California, Southern California, the Echinacea doesn't always come back. So we kind of figure it, you may or may not get it back, but at least you get to enjoy it while it's here. Now another one of our annuals that we carry, these ones here, these are zinnias. And they come in different colors and sizes. These are perfusion zinnias. And they are more of a short, um, squatty plant. They don't, and they're more bushy. And I like these better than the regular zinnias. They seem to flower a little bit better and they last even into December. I've had them grow into the December um, areas. And I just love these flowers. They don't get a lot of the diseases that the other zinnias get. Zinnias can get powdery mildew, so you want to kind of keep an eye out for that. Okay, we also have, we had just gotten these in, Leatris. I'm going to show you a picture of the flower, the flower on the tag here so you can kind of see it because it's not flowering quite yet. But they're also called this gay feather. So because it looks like feathers. And they're happy feathers. And this one here will get a spray of purple flowers, a cone of purple flowers. And the butterflies just love this stuff. Now this is a bulb, so it's going to die down and then it'll come back again in the spring. So this one comes back. It's pretty, pretty good about coming back. Then we have some more herbaceous perennials. These guys are Cosmos. I'm sorry, Cosmos. Yeah, no, not Cosmos. These are Coreopsis. As you can see, they are very versatile. They have different shapes, different sizes. 
and different colors. They're mostly in the yellows and the yellows and the oranges. And um, these will die down in the winter, sometimes completely down. Sometimes they hang on to some of the leaves depending upon how warm our winter is. But these are going to flower from now until December and then they start as it gets colder start to die down and they don't flower that much. And probably it takes them till about March before they really start growing and flowering again and again. It depends on the weather. Um, but they're flowering the whole time. So these are really an, another awesome choice for your garden. And they are drought tolerant. So once established, they will um, go with a lower water use. Now let's see. The other one that we have, this one is Gallardia or Blanket Flower. And this one also comes in a wide range of different colors in the oranges and the yellows. And this one too will die down in the winter time and then come back again from the root. And they pretty much go down. They're not like the Coreopsis where they kind of stick around just a little bit with a few leaves and things, but, but that's okay. We've got lots of things that we can also put around them so that when there's nothing there, at least you've got some other things going in the garden. Okay, so now we're going to go to, let's see, this one here. This one is a buddleia or butterfly bush. And I do have a bunch of them sitting here behind me, as you can see. These, are, these can get pretty good size and they come in all different colors. Uh, no yellows or oranges. They're mostly the pinks, purples, whites, lavenders, that kind of color. These do go deciduous. They are shrubs. They can be anywhere from two to three feet tall all the way up to six to eight feet. And um, they flower during the warm months, so from March to December. And um, these will attract all kinds of things, but mainly butterflies. In fact, when I was pulling the wagon over here, we had a butterfly following us. So they do like these a lot. That's why they're called the butterfly bush. And they do lose the majority of their leaves in the winter. Again, if it's a nice warm winter, they'll hang on to some of their leaves, but they mostly lose the majority of them. About 80 to 90% of their leaves are gonna fall off. And then, which is kind of nice because you get to shed some of that old stuff. And then they'll come out with nice fresh stuff in the spring. And then they start to flower in about, about now, March, April, they really start get to kicking in. You just deadhead them when they're done, when this cone is done, you can just come down and pinch it off and that'll encourage other flowers to continue on through the summer months. So that's a really a good choice. Then, okay, everything else here is pretty much perennial. The, the, this is an aster. And the asters will also die down. This is a herbaceous perennial. It dies down. It sometimes will leave a little bit of tuft of green out at the base, but it pretty much disappears during the winter time. And um, these mostly purples, blues, whites in that range. A bunch of different asters. Okay, now we've got our perennials, the ones that are going to stick around year after year. Uh, the foliage sticks around. They mostly flower low. Well, let's just talk about them. This one here is a Mystic Spire Salvia. So these can get about three feet tall, three feet wide. Most of your salvias and sages will, will attract butterflies. So there's a broad range of salvias that you can use that'll attract butterflies. And when I was standing at the bed to choose which ones I wanted to show or which one I wanted to show, the bed was just full of salvia flowers and bees all over the place and butterflies flitting around and hummingbirds zooming by. So the salvias are a really good choice for your perennial garden and these are drought tolerant so they'll, they'll take a, a drying out between waterings. Most of these plants want to be soaked well and allowed to dry out like a wrung out sponge between waterings. After they've been in the ground two years, these ones here are pretty drought tolerant. So they can actually take a little bit longer drying period between the waterings as they get older. Now this one, I'm sure a lot of you know already, uh, have seen or in our community. This is a little John bot bottle brush. It's a dwarf, so it only gets about four to five feet tall. Now the, the tag says about three, but I've seen them in... in uh, gardens get a little bit taller than that but but you can certainly keep them about three to four feet no problem now these guys are yarrow and as you can see they've got the compound flowers which means they've got lots of little flowers in the cluster 
and they will uh, they come up during the summer months with flowers usually during the winter it's just a nice little tuft of these furry little leaves on the base of the plant through, throughout the winter months but they're they're really a cute addition to your garden to your perennial garden and these are going to flower most of the summer they usually flower probably in around April and then they go until about December and then they're just usually little tufts of, of color down or foliage. Okay, so now we have one of my favorite ones is Lantana and Lantana comes in all different kinds of colors. This one here is called Lantana Havana Pink Sky, which these get about two foot by two foot. And this one here is just white but it's a it's also one of those shorter more compact ones about two foot by two foot these flower pretty much from march until december sometimes into january depending upon how cold and wet we get and there's also a trailing variety that we carry that spreads out pretty far and only gets about six to eight feet long now i also have a passion vine and this one, the flower, is just so beautiful. And we have different colors of these. They're mostly in the purples and whites, and there's some a few reds. These guys here are a vine. We also carry the passion flower that fruits, the fruiting passion flower. And those have a white and blue flower, and then of course they get the passion fruit afterwards. The, the leaves are quite a bit bigger. Um, and they're really vigorous. But again, they're going to follow, they're going to attract butterflies to your garden. Now, of course, we do carry the tropical milkweed. And this one here is really good for uh, butterflies to attract them for their nectar as well. And we also carry the um, native milkweeds, but those are not flowering, so I didn't bring those to show. Um, but let's see, what else do I have? I think that's about it for what I brought today, but I just wanted to also tell you that if you want to plant these in pots, you certainly may, or you can plant them in the ground. Now, when you're planting them in the pots, I would suggest that you use the E.B. Stone Edna's Best Planting uh, Potting Soil. And this is a really good one. It's fairly inexpensive and it has a lot of good ingredients in it and it's organic so you don't have to worry about making your butterflies sick. And you have to be careful with what you're spraying your plants with too as well. So um, soap and water, um, some of the oil sprays, the, the, the mineral oil sprayers are pretty good. As long as you're not getting any, if they're not being host plants, as long as they're not laying eggs on them, then they're, it's fairly safe. But if they're laying eggs, you have to be really careful about what you spray them with. Um, usually just water. <laughs> and then if you're going to plant them in the ground, I like to recommend the E.B. Stone Azalea Camellia Mix. Now this does say that it is for acidic, but because our water and our soil is so high in alkalinity, and most plants want to be neutral to slightly acidic, it's okay to go ahead and just get, if you just want to get one product, I would get the Azalea Camellia Mix. They also have a uh, planting compost that's really good as well. Um, but like I said, I kind of tend to use the Azalea Camellia because of our pH issues with our water and our soil. So I think that's pretty much going to take it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this, but this um, video, please click the like button and hit the subscribe button if you have not done so so far and the bell so that you know when we're getting more videos out. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.